I am a former IRS agent and teaching instructor. Welcome to my YouTube station. It's the home of the 10, five minute or less video. I don't want to bore myself and you don't want to be bored by me. Um, I've worked at IRS uh, for a decade. I've been private practice for four decades. I have been doing this for, yeah, 50 years and I'm still looking good. Anyway, thank you for listening to the YouTube station. Just a little about me. Um, I've worked about 10,000 cases. I'm a national expert in IRS resolution matters. I've been doing this a long time. I've been a national speaker and been on all the major uh, news stations that you can ask for, including one, uh, two actually, uh, yesterday. Um, so today I want to talk to you about the IRS statute of limitations and the 10-year rule. A lot of people, a lot of people want to know about this 10-year rule and how it affects you and what can be expected. First of all, let me explain the normal IRS statute of limitations is it's 10 years. And when does the statute begin? The IRS statute of limitations begin the day IRS actually takes your tax return and puts it on the computer and actually creates an assessment or a file on you. Let's just use the word file. So let's say April 15th, you have your tax return electronically filed, it goes in, IRS gets it, and they put the coding or processes your tax return on the assessment. That's called the 150 date. If you have an IRS transcript, you'll see TC150. That is the IRS date of assessment. Now, normally, if you don't do anything and you don't pay that debt and 10 years later, Usually, that statute just absolutely goes away. IRS cannot collect it. You can win the lottery the next day. IRS can't do anything, not one thing about, about it. But there are certain things along the way or exit stops or off-road ramps that affect the IRS statute of limitation. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. You can call me if you need help or representation, but just let me tell you uh, what the most common things are that extend it. If you file an offer and compromise, every time you file an offer, it extends it the time it was an offer status plus a year. If you make certain payment agreements, by the time that payment agreement was pending, you extended the statute of limitation. Bankruptcy extends it. Um, litigation uh, extends it. And there are certain other things that go ahead. You could sign a waiver. Uh, with IRS, a 900 waiver, and that extends the statute of limitations uh, as well. So if you think you have come uh, to the end of your statute and you're holding your breath and holding your fingers, you want to pull an IRS transcript. Don't worry, it's not going to alarm IRS. It's not going to send any flags up. You need to find out when the statute of limitations is over on your case. A lot of times, normal transcripts don't happen. Uh, have them. So if you need them, sometimes you have to go to a tax professional for them to go up and pull up certain uh, A said, Cole said, Re said uh, transcripts. There's a whole bunch of names on there depending on what statute's going. And then you can find out your 10-year date. So once again, just remember the normal IRS statute of limitations is 10 years. Uh, after that 10 years, yeah, the debt absolutely goes away. If you have a federal tax lien, that's an, another issue. If you're trying to get that lien release, it's best probably to give me a call. But I will let you know that um, if you have a lien filed, your lien will self-release at the end of that 10 years. That means the, li the lien goes away by statute. That's not going to go ahead and satisfy a, a, a creditor. That's not going to go ahead and happen. At the end of the day, they're going to want a hard copy. And if you want a hard copy, you got to go to the Cincinnati Service Unit. There's a fax number for them. You can go ahead and get your copy and have a hard copy of that lien. If Cincinnati gives you a hard copy of that lien and sends it to you, you must go down and record that federal tax lien at the courthouse in which you reside. And that will put the public on notice that you got a full release. If, if, if you do not ask for the lien release, IRS is not going to send it to you unless you paid the lien off off yourself. So remember, if your lien goes ahead and, and your statute's up and you have a lien, it says on the face of your lien, pull it out, and go four inches down and you'll see the wording to let you know it's a self-releasing self-releasing lien. But remember, you need a transcript to assure that that statute's over. And if you want a fed, that federal tax lien released and have a hard copy, 
you go to the Cincinnati unit, there's a fax number for them, and boom, you can go ahead, they will send it to you, and you record it at the courthouse where you live. By the way, I give you the information you need. I'm a former IRS agent. Um, ain't no one does this better than our firm, just so you know. Give me a subscription, if you would, or a comment. Um, if you have a comment and want me to do a YouTube, most of my YouTubes all really come from you. You tell me what to do, and... I just go ahead and answer your questions on YouTube because other people want to go ahead and have the same thing. So once again, give me a subscription, leave a comment, give me a like, and welcome for representation. Thank you very much.